Hi everyone, welcome to this seminar about DevOps and Agile for the Oracle Cloud, how to do it. My name is Shai Schmelzer, I'm Director of Product Management for the Oracle Cloud Development Tools, and with me is Ilma Zozturk from VoxFusion, he's the Head of Architecture there. And in this seminar, what we're going to talk about and show you is how we both implement DevOps in an Oracle Cloud environment and how you can take the same tools and utilities and adapt it to your organization. We would like to keep this seminar as interactive as possible. So to that extent, there's a Q&A box um, that you can access uh, where you can post any of your questions while we're doing this seminar and we'll try to answer them dynamically on the chat during the seminar. In addition, we'll try and cover some of the questions also at the end uh, if we'll have time left. All right, so to start, let's talk about what DevOps is. You have the definition of DevOps that I copied from Wikipedia over here on the left side. But in general, the idea is DevOps is kind of an iterative process where you go through the cycles of steps that you see on the right side, starting from planning what you're going to do, coding, building your application, testing it. If everything goes according to plan, you release and deploy the application. And then you uh, operate the application on a regular basis, monitor it, get feedback, and then go into the next phase of planning, coding, and running through this cycle again. Um, if you look at the definition of DevOps on Wikipedia, you'll see that they're talking about a culture and a movement and best practices and things like that. In this session, we're going to focus on the uh, later part of the definition where we're talking about the fact that beyond being a culture, it's also having an environment that allows you to build, test, and release software rapidly, frequently, and reliably. These capabilities align very nicely with the concepts of agile development methodology. Agile development methodology, among other things, talk about releasing software in a frequent cycle to the customer and releasing software that actually works and have features that they requested and adapting to those changes in requirements from the customer in a very rapid, flexible way. And from the Oracle perspective, we see DevOps as kind of having um, a very big influence on the ability to actually deliver on the promise of agile methodology without having a DevOps cycle that tries to automate as much as possible from those steps in place. It's going to be very hard for you to achieve agile because things are going to take longer. If you have the right DevOps cycle in place, you can do changes and release them much more easily. In our session today, we're going to talk about the Oracle Developer Cloud, which provides you with a complete team and CI CD platform. Um, so this is one of the core services in the Oracle Cloud. It's actually available for any customer that has an Oracle Cloud account. You can provision a developer cloud um, basically for free. And you get a set of functionality over there that allows you to automate most of the DevOps process, starting from planning to coding, building, testing, releasing, and deploying. The two other aspects of operating and monitoring are things that you can do from the Oracle Cloud monitoring dashboards. So inside Developer Cloud Service, what we did is we created a single platform that integrates aspects from issue tracking, managing your agile development process and the sprints of your development and their execution, features that allow your team to collaborate between the team members and help each other. We have a Git-based source version management system an SCI CD pipeline that allows you to automate the build, test, and deploy cycles um, of your application. If we'll dig deeper into each one of those stages and talk about what Developer Cloud offers you, then for the planning stage, we offer an issue tracking system. So this would basically be a system that is similar to things like Bugzilla or Jira that you might be familiar with. It's a place where you can document all your to-do items, all the features that you want to develop, all the bugs that you need to fix, all the tasks that people need to do. You can also work with agile methodology when documenting things, working with epics and stories. In there, beyond documenting what you need to do, you can also assign it to people in your team. You can track the progress. You can estimate uh, delivery timelines, and it helps you basically 
prioritize your work for your next development sprint. To manage your development sprint in the plan stage, we also offer a set of agile dashboards. Those are both Scrum and Kanban dashboards, which allow you to monitor what your team is doing, how they are progressing, um, and how you're achieving uh, your goals and whether you're meeting your key performance indicators while you're going through the development process. We give you a lot of progress charts to help you and the management team understand what the pro uh, project team is doing and how are they doing it. In addition, we have a wiki uh, built into Developer Cloud Service. And in this wiki, you can basically share any information that would help the team collaborate better, whether it's design specs or coding standards or meeting summaries or anything else that you want to have a shared repository of knowledge as part of your team environment. Then we move over to the coding stage. In the coding stage, you're going to develop your software or infrastructure code and you're going to store it in Git repositories. So part of Developer Cloud is your own private Git repositories. You can create multiple Git repositories in each project and you can create multiple projects. Um, Git repositories can also be shared if you want to, for example, use some reusable aspects of your code among various projects that people are using. Okay, maybe you have an infrastructure team that builds some reusable libraries that other people would like to use, then you can use a shared repository. Otherwise, you can use private Git repository where you fully control who has access to the code. Furthermore, you can also do protection at the branch level to allow you to manage, for example, your lifecycle and the freeze releases, for example, or only allow specific people to approve merges of code into your Git repository. Git for you, those of you who are not familiar, is the most popular version management solution out there. Um, and we use standard Git capabilities over here. You can connect to the Git repository with any development tool that supports Git. So of course, using just the command line interface and Git commands to check your code into the repository or out of the repository, manage branches, manage um, merge operation, etc. Part of your merge process might be uh, going through a peer code review process, which is another thing that we offer inside Developer Cloud Service. It allows team members to review the code changes that other team members did, give them feedback on the code, and help them create better code as part of the development. We also have a bunch of language utilities on the build servers to help you, of course, take your code, compile it, and deliver it which moves us to the next step, which is the build step in our cycle. For the build, we have a continuous integration and continuous delivery pipelines in place, allowing you to define automated processes that would take your code and create deliverables out of it. Okay. And we use popular build frameworks. So if you're using frameworks like Maven or Gradle or Ant, which are all very popular, for example, with um, Java developers, although again, Maven can be used for other stuff. For example, um, if you're doing SOA projects in Oracle, you can use Maven. Uh, if you're doing database projects, there's also Maven capabilities in there. If you're doing Node.js development, we support NPM as a mechanism to manage your libraries and your build process. If you're using JavaScript, we offer uh, libraries such as Grant, Bauer, and Gart. If you're on the Oracle stack and you're using things like the Oracle database, we offer the SQL command line utility. And um, if you're using JDeveloper or the Oracle SOA or even Oracle Forms, we have those capabilities in there. If you're on the newer Oracle stack with things like the Project FN, which uh, provides you with function-based development, we also offer unique utilities for that. And of course, you can also run shell scripts to do your build jobs. With all of those uh, capabilities, you can take your code pick up the libraries that it depends on and package a deliverable out of your application. Another thing that we can automate as part of the build is provisioning of environments using, again, industry standards like Docker, Kubernetes, Terraform, and the OCI command line interface. Testing is another important part of your application lifecycle. And 
for us, it's an integrated part of our CI CD pipeline. So you can have steps in your process that, for example, automate testing of your user interface using Selenium, automate the testing of your backend with JUnit and frameworks that are based on JUnit. And you can also bring in other testing frameworks and integrate them into your build process. Uh, for example, Mocha, if you want to test some JavaScript code. Um, Code auditing is another capability that you can invoke as part of your CI CD pipeline. We can hook up to an instance of SonarCube, for example, to do code auditing based on your own preferences and give you a report on whether your code meets your standard. We can uh, leverage utilities such as find bugs as part of it. And a very unique capability that we introduced into developer cloud service in uh, some of the latest releases is security validation uh, using the national vulnerability database where we can take a Java project and scan the libraries that it uses uh, and compare them and the versions that they use over there to a database of known vulnerabilities. Okay, And if we find, for example, that you're using a library that has some vulnerability in it, we can notify you about it um, and basically help you even resolve the problem and fix the issue in your libraries that you're using by picking up, for example, a newer version of the library. So this helps you not just create better code uh, as the development process, but also helps you monitor your code that is running. You can have a scheduled pipeline that tests you the security of your application on your code as part of um, a continuous monitoring of your application. And then we come to the release and deployment steps. Over here, we can take and deploy your artifacts to the Oracle Cloud if you want to. Also deploy to other uh, environments if you prefer. And um, we'll show you in the demo later, because we're using industry standard things like Terraform, Packer, Docker, and Kubernetes, we can take your code, for example, package it as a Docker image and publish it to any Docker repository out there. We can use Kubernetes command lines to deploy your application to Kubernetes clusters. If you need to spin up Oracle Cloud environment, we use the standard Terraform and Packer capabilities to do that. But we also support, if you're preferring, the Oracle-specific command line interfaces for doing things in the Oracle Cloud, allowing you to deploy uh, the software and also to spin up infrastructure if you need to, and then manage the environment from the Oracle uh, Developer Cloud service. So all of those capabilities are integrated into a single environment. And what I wanted to do next is to give you a short demonstration of how a day in the lifetime of a development team might look like when they're using developer cloud service. So I'm going to exit my slides right now, and I'm going to go into my project home. Okay. So as a member of my team, this is developer cloud service. It's a cloud service, so everything that I do here is done directly from the browser. Okay, so I'm inside my browser and I go into my project and I can see on the home page the history of everything that happened in my project over the last days, weeks, etc. Um, I'm right now logged in as a guy called Jeff. And um, as Jeff, maybe for example, I noticed a problem in our code that I would like uh, to report. So to do that, I'm going to go into the issues section of developer cloud service where we have all the issues that have been reported over here. And um, you can define advanced searches to search on topics. Uh, you can define your own searches. We have some built-in searches and you can of course create a new issue report. Okay. So um, in my code, I'm going to use a very simple example over here. We have the wrong greeting um, in one of our functions. Okay. Um, right now it says ciao, okay? and it needs to say something else. Uh, for example, I need to say hello. So I can mark this, for example, as a defect or a feature or a task, or again, if you're working with epics and stories, you can do that. I can set the priority. Let's mark this as a major issue for us um, over here with a high priority. And I can also define which component of my project this 
item is in. And again, those lists are actually customizable. So for example, you can see if I choose, if this was a database issue, it would be assigned to Jeff by default. Uh, this is actually something in our backend function, so it's going to be assigned to Shai. I can then say, when is it due? I actually want it to be resolved, um, for example, on this date. And I can give an estimate of time, or I can even use agile story points to indicate complexity, which is what I'm going to do here. So this is how I report an issue in our issue tracking system. And then it would be assigned to someone. And when that someone comes in, he can see um, this is a new thing that they need to do. As a manager, I might want to also manage um, some uh, boards that would give me a view of my team activity. So I'm going to create a quick uh, board over here. We're going to call it a team one board. Um, again, Kanban or Scrum. Let's create a Scrum board over here. And what I can see here is a backlog of all the issues that are currently open in our environment, whether there are single issues or epics that might be comprised of multiple stories and things like that. And we're going to start a development sprint and we'll call this one the November sprint. Okay. And we're going to say how many points we're going to try and resolve here, let's say 14. And then I'm going to pick up items and move them from my backlog into my current development sprint. So we'll take the high priority item of the wrong greeting that we have over here. And maybe we also want to take this item and bring it over and we'll add one more item, maybe this thing over here. And you can see if I'm overachieving or trying to resolve too many things in a sprint, I'm going to get this one warning over here, but in my case, I'm going to ignore this right now. And we're going to start our development sprint. Okay, so two weeks of development starting from today. And then I can go over and look at my and see the breakdown of the jobs and the tasks who needs to do them and at what stage they are in, okay? So I can say, for example, Shai has two things that he needs to do in the sprint. He hasn't started working on anything. So uh, maybe I want to ping him and tell him, hey, you need to start work on some stuff. We also have a bunch of reports over here where you can see your progress uh, against your uh, key performance indicators. You can also see history of, uh, of um, a project and various types of looking at the data that you have over here. Okay, so now we have a sprint going on. I'm going to switch over to the view of the developers. So I'm going to use a different I'm logged in here as Shai. I'm going to refresh my view over here and I'm in the same project. So I can see, for example, that Jeff just created a new issue over here. And if I'll actually go over to the issues tab and look at the issues that are assigned to me, I can see that this issue, issue 21, is actually assigned to me. I can go in here, read all the information. Maybe there are some links to wikis with information. I can also update things about this issue. For example, I can say working on this today. Okay, um, so we'll add this comment. And when I do a comment over here again, this is all shared among the team. So if Jeff goes in, he can see that Shai is working on this issue today. All right, so back to Shai's view, all our code is inside our Git repository, okay? And I know that the issue right now is that we have the wrong greeting. So let me look up this um, wrong greeting, ciao. Okay, I can see it's in the grid service over here, which is some Java code over here that um, we're maintaining in our project. So I want to change it. Um, however, I'm not going to change it, of course, on my master branch. The right way to work is actually go over and create a new branch um, of my code. So um, I'm gonna go over here and create a new branch and call it um, fix21. And that's my new branch. And now that I'm working on um, the fix21 branch, I can go back to my files and um, look up my uh, greeting file over here. And I'm working on my branch and I can go and directly edit the code. I can of course check out the code into my own local environment, work on it in my favorite editor and do changes over there. Uh, just for simplicity, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the code directly over here. 
and I'm going to say hello instead of ciao. And then I'm going to commit and say this is a fix for issue 21, changed the greeting. So did my code changes, checked it into my repository. It's now in a separate branch. So before we actually merge it into our main line of code, I'm going to go through a merge request process. I'm going to request to take the code from a Git repository and put into master the changes I did in the branch 21 uh, fix, okay? Um, over here, I'm going to say this is related to um, this defect, okay? And I want Jeff, for example, to review my code. I can give a description um, it automatically picks up the issue that was related. Um, I can say what I did. Uh, and create a request for Jeff to review my code, okay? Jeff is now going to get an email telling him, hey, um, someone is requesting a code review from you. I'm going to go in as Jeff right now into our merge request, and he can see from his view as Jeff the merge request in his queue. He goes in, he can see what I wrote to him. He can look at the changed files over here. He can see exactly the code change that I did here. He can give me comments on the code. For example, he can say, uh, looks okay. okay. And give me a comment. And we can now do this iterative process of reviewing the code, updating the code, going through versions and things like that. To simplify over here, Jeff is going to approve this code. It says, works fine click OK, and then he can click to merge the code into the master branch. Okay, so I'm going to delete this branch, merge it into master, and I'm going to mark my issue as resolved. So I'm going to create this merge commit now, and the code has been merged. What's going to happen now is I'm going to take you into the build process, and you're going to see that we're actually now doing a build job. And this build job is part of a pipeline of several jobs that are now going to be executed. Let's look at the first job that is being executed right now and look at the configuration, okay? So this build job is hooked up to my Git repository, okay, to the master branch, and is automatically invoked every time that someone changes the code over there. Then it's going over and doing some um, steps. In our case, we're using Docker and we're doing a Docker login, Docker build, and Docker push, pushing our image into Docker Hub in our case. And again, in the build process, you can use multiple other solutions, Maven, Gradle, Ant, SQL CL, OCI CLI, Project FN, Docker commands, or Unix shell scripts, okay? We can see the job just finished successfully. If we go back, we can now see, we are now even moved over to the Helidon deploy. So if we actually click over here, we can see those two jobs finished, and now this job is running. Okay, so the flow is we take the code, we package it as a um, Docker image and we publish it to Docker Hub, and then we deploy it to the Aura Kubernetes cluster, which is what we're doing here in the steps, in the configuration, we're connecting to the Oracle cloud infrastructure and doing um, kubectl to publish our application. Right, so we can see this also finished successfully. So all our pipeline ran successfully. If we now go over to check it in our dashboard, first we'll go to Docker Hub. Previously it was updated a day ago. We'll do a refresh here. And you can see it was updated a minute ago. Let's go over here. This is our Kubernetes dashboard. Again, updated uh, 21 hours ago. We'll do a refresh. And you can see it was updated a minute ago, so our deployment worked, and we can go back to developer cloud service. So this is kind of a day in the life and what you can do from developer cloud service. And this is one of the tools that we inside Oracle are using heavily by all our development teams inside Oracle. But it's not just us doing this. We also have a lot of customers doing this. So I'm going to switch over now and uh, give, it, uh, give the presentation to Ilmaz, who's going to share his experience. Thank you, Shay. I'm just going to uh, share my screen. OK. 
Can you all see my screen now, sir? Yes. Perfect. So thanks again uh, for handing it over. Um, I'm Yilmaz Zosturk. I am the head of architecture at Box Fusion Consulting. And what we wanted to do was to share our experiences with you all uh, today for the use case of developer cloud service, especially uh, with the Visual Builder cloud service. So uh, as Shay already said, we would like the session to be as interactive as possible. So for the, if you have any questions, please post it on the chat. And again, the main aim <clears throat> for today is for me to kind of share our experiences with you all and to show you how this tool can be used in conjunction with uh, VBCS development. So who are we? Uh, VoxVision is a niche CRM CX consultancy based in London. Uh, we are 30 plus specialists and we are focused on um, CX products such as sales, marketing and service and our aim is kind of to power these applications, Oracle applications with Oracle, Oracle platform services such as VBCS or Oracle Integration Cloud or Process Cloud Service or Chatbot. So Panasonic has, has been and, and is uh, a long running customer of ours, starting from Sales Cloud, implementing Sales Cloud, uh, Marketing Cloud, and slowly, organically expanding the, the Oracle base uh, there at Panasonic. And the project scope for us, for this specific project to implement a partner portal using VBCS was more of a modernization exercise. They uh, already had a, a portal, which was a bespoke Java ADF based e-learning app hosted on uh, Java Cloud Service SX, a light Java Cloud Service in conjunction with Oracle Sales Cloud PRM module. So, uh, what they had was the partners were kind of doing their day-to-day -day interactions, such as uh, marketing fund requests or deal registrations and everything in Sales Cloud. And when it was time to kind of for them to get trained uh, or kind of get certified on Panasonic uh, products, they would be going navigating to a ADF-based e-learning app that is uh, that was kind of integrated with Sales Cloud. Um, the aim of the project is to replace, was to replace this with VBCS app. Uh, the main drivers was VBCS app to be a one-stop shop, so no two different uh, systems, if you like. And for some of the users, the sales cloud templates were too limiting, so they wanted a bit more flexibility, a bit more branding. Uh, and also, they also wanted to bring in um, the other solutions such as Oracle Content and Experience Cloud into the picture, being able to run their asset library there. So they wanted that like one-stop shop in a way uh, for for their new portal. This is our high-level architecture diagram. Uh, we we initially wanted to make sure that all of their platform services were on universal credit environment, the new uh, Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So they they are. Uh, users of content, content and experience cloud, what we wanted to make sure is that we defined all the services, the visual builder services on the same box, and they were tightly integrated with their sales cloud as well through single sign-on, both with their sales cloud test and sales cloud production environments, and also as well as integrating uh, the VVCS app with sales cloud, we also made sure that the the Eloqua instances, the marketing cloud instances, were also integrated with this solution itself. And both OIC Test, which is the Oracle Integration Cloud, which hosts Visual Builder, and OIC Prod, they are, were all connected to the developer cloud service, which was spun up. And as Shai also said, that it's a it's a service which is easy for us to, which which was easy for us to switch on uh, initially to trial, really. But then after that we really got to got use of the product and use it throughout the project. Um, the whole concept of CI C D, because we are coming back coming from a background of SaaS implementation, it was, to be honest, was a new concept for the team, for everyone, the developer portal. Uh, we did have uh, teams that previously worked on uh, some civil projects for open UI and some service cloud projects building portals or sales cloud ADF building, but we never never really had the collaboration platform before. So developer cloud was a 
good chance for us to trial it out and to see whether it be good good use. So the, the team we had was two two senior Civil Open UI consultants. They are very familiar with JavaScript frameworks and UI design. Uh, one senior Service Cloud consultant, again, very familiar with portal design for Service Cloud right now product. And we had one senior Oracle Sales Cloud consultant, which was also taking the part-time PM role, which was very, very uh, crucial for us because our portal development was primarily REST API driven. So we were kind of using Sales Cloud as a headless CRM in the back end, as a secure back end and kind of putting a nice skin in front of it with uh, Visual Builder Cloud Service and part-time architect to oversee the whole project, which, is, which was myself. <laughs> and also, the developer cloud was our Git repository. Uh, we didn't have an external Git. We, we used developer cloud as, a, as our Git repo. And as I said before, VBCS instances were coupled up with the DevCS instance. And you will be able to see that as I'll be showing the, the actual <laughs> instance that we use during the uh, build phase as well. So how did we use it? Uh, the project was, in, was run in Agile methodology, and when I, sh when I show you the demo, you'll be able to see how we kind of mapped out the sprints and issue tracking and everything there. Uh, each sprint was defined in DevCS, and we basically uploaded all the relevant stories under each sprint, and each of, these, each of our developers were kind of had their own uh, issues assigned, as stories assigned to them. Uh, we run our daily Scrum meetings with developer cloud service on the big screen. So that was a good engagement uh, from from us. Uh, the backlog was managed on DevCS. Uh, we utilized wiki functionality on DevCS as well. But again, uh, in the beginning, I think the, the velocity was higher, but then near the middle or the, to the end of the project, as, as with all the projects, I think, people start having less and less time for Wiki, but I'll kind of give you a, a, a teaser for that one as well in the demo. And what we have done was primarily we, we followed the VBCS blogs written by the product directors, as, as yourself, Shai, uh, to implement the CI CD for VBCS apps. And for that, simply we, we started by defining a virtual machine on the FCS with minimum requirements with Node.js installed. Uh, we defined a build job to be able to stage the app, which hopefully I'm gonna be able to demonstrate to you. And we build another build job to publish the app, simple as that. Now I will be switching to the environment kind of to show you what we have. Um, right, so this is our DevCS environment. We, uh, as I said, we created some of the virtual machine templates. Again, one, uh, we have a few machines here, but then when, when we actually start doing the CICD, these uh, machines will start up automatically, which I can show you as well. Whilst I'm gonna show you the other functionalities, I'll start up this VM. We defined one project, PRM portal, which was the core aim of this uh, project itself. As you can see on the right hand side, we have the team uh, with everyone collaborating here. And as Shay already showed, there's the recent activities throughout the history. Um, what I will show is what, what I will start with is actually from the bottom using the wiki area. Um, initially, as I said, there were uh, we, we kind of started adding stuff here, but then the velocity dropped down. But just as, a, as an example, we kind of use the wiki functionality to share uh, important gotchas on the VCS or Sales Cloud REST APIs, etc. I guess the core part was for us was using the Scrum board, uh, really. So I'm just gonna press this one just to show you the report uh, across different sprints we had. So in total, we had uh, five sprints, and you can see the velocity chart here, the speed ramping up, and you can see for each sprint, the date, uh, number of issues, story points completed, etc. So this was very useful for our uh, PM. And let's, for example, let's go to here to show the uh, sprint itself, each of them, so sprint six, we can see how many story points were added or burnt down, 
and you can see the event with story points here. We also use the issues as well. Uh, we, 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 as I said, we were assigning issues to individual developers and they were following up with it and they were marking them as done as and when they completed it. <coughs> we defined, we, we have defined many uh, Git repositories here again initially to trial around with, but again, so for example, this one is the one I created today to be able to demonstrate here and not to disrupt other people's work. But you can see that there are multiple Gits actually hosted on the developer cloud itself. Just gonna quickly double check whether my VM is now up, for example. It's still starting up. I'm just gonna quickly show you the build tasks that we have defined. So as I said, there were two flavors from, from our, our perspective. One was the build task, which is staging the VBCS app, and the other one was actually publishing the app itself to make it live. So let's have a look at the configuration of the build job itself. This part is sorry, it's gonna autofill in here. This part is quite important. Uh, this is actually the, the checkbox that enables whenever there's a commit on the Git repo, this build function to be triggered. And what I will show you as well is that VBCS is tightly integrated with DevCS itself. So whenever I make a change and push my changes from VBCS, I will show you that this job will automatically get triggered. And this is the Git I'm, I'm using. Just to quickly flick to my VBCS, I'll show you that we are actually connected to this Git repo from here. As you can see, that's the Git repo we are currently coupled up with. I can do is I can do a quick Git status to understand uh, whether I'm fully uh, aligned with my repo. There you go. It's fine. I go back. Then here I can define the the parameters for my build job. Um, as you can see, there are different uh, parameters here. Just going to make sure that default value for the app to be staged is this OOW webinar. And I mean, again, if you're familiar with the VBCS and the grunt tasks it, it, it provides, you can provide different optimization parameters. This can be none, this can be uglified, this can be uglified too, to kind of to minimize the code and make it more efficient basically when it's running. Uh, we didn't define any before build or after build tasks for our, for our use case, but just as the step, we have a NPM install to make sure that the node libraries are installed on the, on the VM. And then we have, we are invoking the grunt task, the VB build grunt task, which is one-stop shop to stage and deploy the stage application, basically. Let's make sure that this is fine. I'm just gonna save this job. I'm gonna double check once again whether the VM is up. Yep, I can see that it's available. And what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna do a tiny change on my app. I'm gonna push the changes up. So I'm just gonna double check here. So this is my uh, home page. What I will do is I will update the greeting, which is here. I'll come back and I'm going to be updating this to hey. <coughs> so again, you won't see any kind of save buttons here. It's, in, it's immediately saved as you are typing in on VBCS. I'm just going to refresh the page to make sure my change is in, is in VBCS. And here it is. And now, again, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm gonna push this change to give to my Git repo. OK, 
can see the progress from here and to which repository it's posting to. All done. Now I should see a job running automatically. And there you go. And, and it kind of indicates that it is initiated by the SCM change as well. So you know that if it's manually triggered or or it's created by the VPCS job itself. And I'll also show you that the Git uh, repo being updated as well on that one. So if I go to the build job itself, I can go to logs and I can see the whole journey throughout here. That kind of concludes my um, my little demo, my short demo of how we kind of used uh, DevCS with VBCS. But again, if you have any questions, please feel free to post it on the on the chat area. But other than that, thank you very much. Thanks so much. So if you let me show my desktop, um, we'll finalize the presentation for today. So hopefully this has been useful for all of you guys and you saw um, some of the things that you can do in the Oracle Cloud in terms of managing your full development life cycles, form planning uh, through the agile development, automating the DevOps cycle all the way to the deployment of your application in the Oracle Cloud. Again, a couple of things to mention here. Oracle Developer Cloud is an entitlement that you get the minute that you open an Oracle Cloud account. So if you have an Oracle Cloud account, you can just go and spin yourself an instance of Oracle Developer Cloud and leverage the features that you've just seen today. It's built for a variety of software uh, and infrastructure capabilities. You saw a couple of demos today, one with Visual Builder and one with um, Java code that is actually based on the Helidon project for serverless uh, in the cloud using, again, Docker, Kubernetes, things like that. And one thing that we would love is for you guys to give it a try and try out the product, let us know what you think. We have a lot of tutorials to get you started and a community where you can ask any questions. That being said, if you have any other questions, um, again, post them right now on the Q&A and we'll try and answer them. I can already see a couple over here. Um, so one question over here is asking whether you can use the same approach to manage database related code. So the answer is definitely yes. Um, database has some unique uh, aspects to managing the life cycle there. They don't exactly have this step of package and deploy and things like that. But if you look up some uh, uh, Google searches on um, Oracle database and DevOps, you'll find some blogs that show you examples of how we use developer cloud to manage database code. So manage SQL scripts, peer SQL functions, and um, manage them in our Git repository, manage their life cycle. We usually do this with um, frameworks such as Liquibase, Flyaway, uh, which specializes in managing the lifecycle of SQL code. And then inside developer cloud service, we use the SQL CL capabilities to directly run um, SQL code against your database. And this can be um, an autonomous transaction processing database or just a database in the cloud, and we can um, execute SQL on those. So definitely, look up some of those examples and you'll see it over there. There's a question asking about if I can clarify the pricing for developer cloud service. So yeah, um, developer cloud service, the base functionality here, uh, the issue tracking, the Git, um, the wiki, the merge request, all of those are basically provided for you for free the minute that you open an Oracle cloud account. The build functionality, the build is executed on compute instances. So basically compute environments that we spin up and run the build process on and you would pay for those compute instances for the time they are being used. So you have control over those, you can spin them up and down as Ilma has showed you. Um, and we can also help you manage those efficiently. Um, so it's very cheap to run those build jobs. Basically, the price of compute is very cheap in said Oracle. Um, so that, that's the basic pricing for developer cloud service. Um, and I think that's all the time we had for today. So again, thank you everyone uh, for attending. Thanks, Ilmaz, for sharing your demo. And if you have any further question, you can find us on our community page.
um, and we'll be happy to answer questions over there. Thanks everyone, have a good day.